Telstar 1 was launched on July 10, 1962 at 8.35 a.m. UTC from Launch Complex 17 at Cape Canaveral. Owned by AT&T and developed through an agreement between AT&T, Bell Labs, NASA, the UK's General Post Office, and France's National PTT, it was the test for a transatlantic television relay system. Telstar 1 was the first satellite to relay live transatlantic television and also handle telephone calls. Launched on a Thor Delta rocket, Telstar 1 had a mere 177 kilogram mass, tiny considering the impact that it and its successors would have. It was spin stabilized, so it had an array of antennae around its circumference. On the two hemispheres, above and below the antennae, were the solar panels. Since it was so small and weak, it was dependent on large ground antennas including the specially built Andover Earth Station. Telstar 1 was and still is in a 2 hour and 37 minute orbit at a 44.8 degree inclination with a periapsis of 952 kilometers and an apoapsis of 5,933 kilometers. While this is a high orbit, it is not nearly geosynchronous orbit, which is a circular orbit at 35,786 kilometers, so Telstar 1 could only be used for 20 minutes of each orbit. AT&T planned to eventually launch a full constellation to provide continuous service. Still, it was able to transmit Walter Cronkite, Chet Huntley, and Richard Dumoby in its first publicly available broadcast. It was shorter lived than expected, handling a few hundred transmissions before it deactivated in November of 1962, mainly because of the Starfish Prime nuclear bomb test detonated at an altitude of 400 kilometers, which took place the day before Telstar 1's launch. Starfish Prime increased the radiation Telstar 1 was exposed to. Nevertheless, Telstar 1 was the start of satellite television, and it remains in orbit around the Earth to this day.